Well, it's time to get started on a project that I've had in mind for quite a while now. My single cat whisker whirler. Twirler. Whisker machine. It's going to be a, have a, a crank on one side and then a vertical shaft with a cat whisker sticking out. You turn the crank, whisker goes... Let's see, I got a whisker around here somewhere. Whiskers. My girlfriend Christine runs a cat boarding business. She has several cats of her own, so she has been collecting cat whiskers for me for quite a while. I should note, these fall out on their own. She's not harvesting cat whiskers. She just keeps an eye out for when they fall on the ground. So I'll use one like this, and when you turn the crank, it'll go. <laughs> That's it. I think it's gonna be hilarious. I'm using a set of gears that my cousin Scott gave me more than two decades ago. I always thought I'd make jewelry out of them, but here I go using them for their intended purpose. Crazy. This is my collection of stainless steel rod and tubing. I'm hoping I'll have something in here that will be the right size to fit in this gear, but we'll see. Got my tiny little screwdriver to fit in this tiny little set screw. Tighten it up. Looks pretty good. I lucked out. This is a piece of welding rod that I bought for another project. I think I got this for my umbrella machines. It looks like it fits. Let's see if it fits the other one. No, that's a different size. Ha! Well, I got lucky again. I have one piece of this size, a welding rod, and it's the right fit for this little tiny gear. The next thing I have to figure out is how I'm going to run this rod through the support that will hold it in place. And I think I'm going to make the structure of the machine out of wood, but I think I don't want this to be just in a wood hole. I think it's going to have more drag than I want. Um, so I've got some tubing, and this one fits perfectly. Look at that. It's a perfect fit with uh, just enough play that it'll rotate smoothly. So. Uh, this is going to effectively act as a bearing. So I've got the, the rod and the bearing for the big gear. Uh, that's going to be great. For the little gear, I, I don't have any more... That's, that's the smallest tubing that I've got, so I have to figure this out. I'm not quite sure what to do. I could just run it straight through the wood. That would be okay. Uh, I could also, when I made my umbrella machine, I made some pieces that were coils of wire that acted essentially as a, a, a bearing. So I could make a coil of wire like this. Actually, this one fits pretty well. <laughs> Maybe I'll use this. And it should be a little bit longer. I think I'd want to do a line of coils. So this is three. Maybe I'd want to do six or eight, just to be long enough that there's not going to be uh, too much wiggling play. Once I got the gear set up, it was time to pick out the wood to use. It can feel like you're not working, but sometimes it's really important to just sit and think. In this session, I came up with a great idea. The initial drawing was just the most basic form to get the mechanics to work the way I wanted them to, but when I was sitting and thinking, I had a great idea for how to get those basic mechanics 
but also to make it look really cool. Plus, it streamlines some construction challenges from the original drawing. I knew that the tolerances for getting the gears lined up were really tight, so I picked a super hard honey locust that my friend Michael cut down and gave to me a few years ago. I was nervous about getting the holes drilled just right, so I decided to do a prototype with the 2x4 to be sure everything was going to work the way I hoped. I'm going to use just this piece of 2x4 to make a, uh, to do a trial run. It's always better to make the mistakes on something you don't care about than to mess up your nice piece of wood. Forstner bits have a maximum RPM and it's printed on these, thankfully it's printed right here on the shaft. This one has a max RPM of 450. So I'm going to have to change the belts on my drill press to make sure that I'm not going too fast. With a, a bit this wide, you get an incredible amount of torque on it. So if it's going too fast, it can cause problems with the wood, but it can also be dangerous if it rips the piece out from your grip or from the clamps. So got to make sure to have the right RPM. I realized I'm making a lot of dust, so I gotta have my, my dust fan here. It's just a box fan with a furnace filter tied on with a piece of string. It's extremely low tech and it's shocking how well it works. Amazingly, I got the holes lined up on the first try in the prototype, but after looking at it for a while, I realized it would be better if the gears were centered. Sometimes stuff goes easily and sometimes it doesn't. I didn't have the stainless steel tubing that I wanted for the vertical shaft in this machine. Uh, so I had to order it. And much to my surprise, there really were almost no options in the place uh, where, I, where I ordered this stuff. So I got this piece of tubing, which the interior diameter is uh, three thousandths of an inch smaller than what I wanted. I didn't think it would matter. Turns out it matters. I can drill it out. It's okay, but it's just, you know, another step to have to take. And then I noticed that this shaft is not 90 degrees to this board, which led me to discover that my drill press is the table was not at 90 degrees to the, the drill shaft. Okay, no big deal. It's all adjustable, except that the large bolt that holds that thing in place, the instructions say, use an adjustable wrench to loosen the bolt and adjust the angle. Well, an adjustable wrench doesn't fit in there. Doesn't matter what you have. Son of a f And the largest box end wrench that I have is 7 eighths. Turns out the bolt is 15 sixteenths which, if that's not immediately obvious to you, 
is that much bigger than this wrench. Seriously? And I've been keeping my tools in my car, so this is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it was when I brought it in. Cold tools are no fun to work with. So I've had a whole series of little problems tonight, but that's how it goes. We'll get through it. Because my wrenches didn't fit on the big bolt to adjust the, the table of the drill press, I realized, well, maybe good old force will help. And I used a sledgehammer and that worked just fine. It's pretty funny to be doing fine adjustments with a sledgehammer. <laughs> All right, onward. prototype with the gears in it and here's what I hope will be the final block just depends on if I make any mistakes when drilling the holes the phrase is measure twice cut once but I'm at the point with this thing where I've measured it about four times because I'm pretty worried I'm gonna drill the holes wrong there's a certain amount of play that can't really be helped when you're drilling into wood especially with small holes so I've got it marked off I'm going to do my best. We'll see how it goes. going to be a major pain if I didn't line it up right. I had a couple ideas on how to fix it or make my mistake look like maybe it was sort of intentional-ish, but I'm so glad that I got it to line up. Holy cow, this one is way longer than all the rest. That is a long whisker. Cat whiskers are tiny. It's really hard to see. <laughs> Do horses have whiskers? They'd be a little bigger. <laughs> Christine has horses, although they're mini horses, so... Are mini horse whiskers bigger than cat whiskers? might be too small. Well, there's no going back now. I gotta figure out something to put in here. <laughs> I was talking to Christine about it and she's a brilliant researcher. So she just researched <laughs> big cat whiskers. I'm gonna see if I can chat with people at some big cat rescues in the state. And I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe <laughs> they'll be willing to let me have a whisker or two. That'd be so cool. Yesterday was a day where I was making parts. Almost a literal nuts and bolts day. Grinding this, cutting that, shaping this, 
cutting tubing the right length for the uh, for the bearing for one of the shafts. It's the kind of day where at the end of it, it doesn't really look like anything has changed. Um, but but the reality is that that's a big part of art making. There are many days where you're just doing little things, just checking off the list, doing one thing after another until it's all done. And then eventually, all of a sudden, you have a finished product. Today is the penultimate assembly day. I'm gonna make sure everything looks as it's supposed to look and works the way it's supposed to work. Then I'll be able to take it all apart again, put it back together with a finish on the wood, and also I'm gonna use some thread lock in the set screws on the gears and the shaft collars. I sent a message to Wisconsin Big Cat Rescue to see if I could get some cat whiskers from them. I just got a notification from the post office that I've got an envelope from them. I hope it has whiskers in it. Let's see. It's here. I hope it's some whiskers. The Wisconsin Big Cat Rescue and Education Center's mission is to provide a safe place and a comfortable home for abused, neglected, and unwanted big cats, and also to educate the public about these extraordinary animals. Whoa. Awesome. This is so great. I was worried I might not be able to get these whiskers, and now I can finish the project. I just have to put the final touches on. I'm so grateful to Wisconsin Big Cat Rescue for sending me whiskers. When I got the whiskers, I wasn't actually sure what kind they were, and I just sent them an email and found out they're tiger whiskers. <sighs> I was hoping they'd be tiger whiskers. I don't know why. All the big cats are super cool, but I just think tigers are the coolest. It's time to see if they fit. The moment of truth. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. Let's make a comparison. Here's the regular cat whisker, and here is the tiger whisker. Look how much thicker it is. It's gonna show up so much better. I've got my whisker picked out. Now all I have to do is the final assembly. I have to put the finish on the wood, and it's done. How great it is! Look at that tiger whisker go! It'll get, I think it'll get smoother as it's used more. Here's a brand new. <laughs> yes! It's so awesome! I'm so excited! Wow. 
Wow, that took a lot longer than I expected. My plan when I started this project was it was going to be a short, quick and easy, simple project. Just get back in the saddle and <laughs> get something cranked out pretty quick. Well, let's see. February to September. Yeah, that took a while. <laughs> but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, Life in the pandemic has been a little bit difficult. Sometimes it's been hard for me to do the things that I like, so I'm gonna take this as a victory that it is, that I got it done. I'm pretty happy about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm amazed you made it all the way to the end. Good job there. You can find me on all the social medias. I'm Mark Hayward on Twitter and the Mark Hayward on Instagram and Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and help me make more cool projects, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Mark Hayward. You'll get some inside views and early access to the videos. If you like this video, I hope you'll hit that like button and please consider subscribing. Both those things help me out a lot. And I'll see you soon with the next project.